my name is Stacy Wills, and I'm the Director of Corporate Development at Illuminate and also co-founder of Fire and Ice. My name is Dan Ricard. Uh, I'm the Senior Director for the Bright Idea Center. Illuminate is a leading global provider of web collaboration software to academic institutions around the world. One of the key features of our web collaboration software is the ability to work in low bandwidth environments, over unstable internet environments, and across multiple operating systems. Using those advantages, we created a very unique project of great social importance called uh, Fire and Ice. And Fire and Ice was designed to connect stu students and schools in North America with schools and students in developing nations, specifically in Latin America and in Africa, and specifically targeting those located in areas outside of major city centers. What we're really tasked with is looking at what our technology can do in North America, in Europe, and Australia, and saying, well, how can we bring that to perhaps have a wider global impact? Um, part of our mandate at the very beginning of the organization was no user left behind. We wanted to ensure that we could take the Illuminate software, make it work in areas on bandwidth as low as 28.8. We wanted it to work on cross-platform. One of the great stories is when we went to Ouagadougou, uh, which is in Burkina Faso. We had an opportunity to demo the technology in a very high-tech center, and we're like, look, I'd love to show you the technology here. However, what I also want to do is get out of this environment, and I want to go to a local internet cafe running on a computer that was donated five years ago and get Illuminate to work there. With our success in that internet cafe, we were able to bring in students to that internet cafe and have them dialogue with students back in Calgary. And it was the first time that either one of those schools had an international dialogue. Mm -hmm. It was done on a 33-6 dial-up connection with voice over IP, interactive whiteboard, and the students got to know each other. That we can replicate. We can replicate that worldwide. It would be great if everybody had high-end video conferencing and a million dollars a pop, but that's not realistic. What's realistic are internet cafes that we can turn into a learning node and bring people in from all around the world. A couple days ago, we did a collaboration session between an elementary school in Calgary, Alberta, and one in Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso. These kids were about the age of seven to 10 years old, and the task that they were set was to talk about a day in their respective lives. And uh, the Burkina school was on a dial-up connection. They showed their webcam. They talked effectively over voice over IP, and they gave the uh, Calgarian students a cultural understanding of what it was like to live in West Africa and grow up as a student. And the Calgarian students did the same on their side. And at the end, both classes sang the national anthems of their respective countries. It was an extremely heartwarming moment. And uh, the teachers had exclaimed the desire to continue their collaboration by actually working on a project together mm -hmm to achieve a common goal. And that's what uh, our program, Fire and Ice, is all about, is translating that dialogue into specific action steps that accomplish specific objectives. The kids in Ouagadougou were speaking French, and in Calgary, they were obviously speaking English, and we used a simultaneous translator. Okay, so we did real-time translation, and the students loved it. Some of the students spoke French, so they dialogued uh, back and forth as well. That's great. If I, can I tell another story about yes, what please. we did in, uh, in Itakwachiara? Uh, the first Fire and Ice event that we did, we were given the mandate um, really to take our technology into a remote area. And again, we didn't want to go to Rio, we didn't want to go to Sao Paulo, we wanted to go remote. So we went to a village called Itakwachiara, um, which is about four hours uh, by bus from uh, the nearest airport on, in the Amazon. I Very it up, remote. But I couldn't find it on the yeah, it's, it's not a big place. And uh, basically, everything that we needed, I carried with me on the plane in a suitcase. And I got to the school and I set everything up. And we did the event and we brought in all the students from Itakwachiara and they dialogued back and forth with students uh, in, in Canada. And at the end, the principal came up to me and said to our translator, because it was all Portuguese, and again, we're doing real-time translation, the, the principal came up and said, my students have always had ears. They would receive content, they would listen to the content, and they were appreciative of that. However, you have now given them a voice. For the first time, at the end of the presentation, 
they knew that they would now be asked to present back to the audience what they thought of the issues. Mm -hmm. And they had an opportunity to talk about the environmental issues. The students in Canada now had an opportunity to hear firsthand mm -hmm. what was going on in the Amazon. And they were able to, again, come to a crescendo of an action item that they could work on together as a team, which has really led into the development of Fire and Ice 2, Fire and Ice 3. Fire and Ice 3 extended to three continents, mm -hmm. five different schools, students from all over the planet, and again, not focused on the technology, instead focused on a deliverable. What can your school do to help the environment and how can you share that information with schools from around the world? Well, I wish I could sit here and say that everyone's gonna be on high speed and you know it, it won't matter, everyone can communicate at the drop of a hat. From the infrastructure that we saw in our travels, that's not the reality. The reality of the situation is Dial-up is here to stay, and it's gonna be a long time before everyone is on high-speed internet. What we wanna do is we wanna extend, through the Illuminate technology, learning nodes across Africa, across South America, where students, even on slower internet connections, can still partake in communicating with schools around the world. Mm -hmm. And we wanna create a learning network that really bridges that digital divide that everybody talks about. And it can be done on older equipment, can be done on multiple operating systems, can be done on a variety of bandwidth. But at the end of the day, the students must realize that in order to get benefit from this, they have to interact, they have to engage, and they have to talk to other students around the planet. That's great. Thanks very much for coming. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. We appreciate your time. Thank you.